All right. Well, thank you so much for coming this morning. Uh, for those that don't know me, good for you. Uh, <laughs> my name is Tom Clancy. I'm the deputy fire chief in, in the city of Littleton. And so um, those of you that know Gino Fratelloni, right? And who doesn't know Gino, right? So Gino came up to me, wanted me to say, uh, do a little presentation for the Rotary Club on fire safety. And uh, this was back in um, August or something like that. And I said, hey, Gino, I got something better than that. I said, I'll do a presentation on how we built the new million dollar ladder truck. So, and, and the reason for that was this is the third truck that I've overseen being built, third fire truck in my last, I think. I'm pretty sure we're not buying any. Unless we crack one up, you know, don't say that. Um, so, but, um, all the other ones, I, a couple of ambulances and two fire engines, um, you kind of didn't get a progress report throughout. And in this particular case, um, is that still too much glare for you? No. I'm going to move you if it is, you know. Um, but that and I always stand in the way because then I pace. My wife always tells me I pace. Um, so this particular truck that we just purchased, I got almost every other week I got pictures of how it was progressing. So I said, hey, you know, this is kind of cool. I can show how a truck progresses through the manufacturing stage. And it's pretty amazing. Um, people always go, how oh, much does that fire truck cost? You know, and uh, let's see, the truck, the 2012 engine, it was like $425,000. 2016, where we built, we took two pieces of apparatus and we made one. Um, we combined two trucks in essence. That was $550,000, half a million bucks, over half a million dollars. In this one, the tower ladder was $1,010,000. So a million dollars for one truck. Now, keep in mind, they have like a three year lifespan, so we'll be back in a couple years to get another one. Uh, they, so, they're, like, so a ladder truck um, is pretty unique in, in how much is, uh, okay, everyone, Guess who's late? Oh, welcome, Nicole. So a ladder truck, you know, is, is a very s complex fire truck because you've got, it's like a crane and it's, uh, in this particular case, we put a pump and a tank of water on it where our old truck didn't have that. So, um, but, so anyway, I practiced this slideshow on one other person. <laughs> And this is what happened. So that was my trial run, and unfortunately I did it where the sheepskin rug was, and Lola didn't think much of it. So I'm hoping we get a little more out of it. So just a little, little background. Um, we had a 1988 Seagrave ladder. Seagrave's a brand. Uh, and that was purchased primarily for what was then the Digital Equipment Corporation, which is now the IBM building. So at the time, they needed reach. Not load up, out. Right, so um, they purchased this truck, um, and you know we're 30 years later. It's it's made its useful lifespan. We got to replace it. So we um, we went to town meeting. We we looked at uh, avenues of a grant, which we didn't really qualify for. So anyway, um, we go to annual town meeting. It passed, uh, and we. We awarded it to this company called Rosenbauer USA. Now, there's, there's numerous different manufacturers. In this particular case, this truck is what they call a demo. So sometimes you buy a demo fire apparatus, and it's been driven around the country to show people, hey, check out our truck. Now we're done with it. Who wants to buy it? So you save money, but you lose some ability to engineer what you want into the truck. So in this case, we saved roughly about $200,000 because They've already done, this is, hey, they've already built it, per se, with the drawings and everything. And to back up, I mean, how much time you guys? You got six, seven hours, because I could be here all day. Um, so to back up, the way you build a fire truck is, uh, first you got to get the money, right? So yes, thank you, taxpayers, uh, of which I'm one. And um, then, uh, so the money's usually appropriate in May, comes available in July, and you travel to the factory. And those factories are all in, like, romantic places, like I've been to Snyder, Nebraska. <laughs> now I've been to uh, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. You know, they're never in Vegas. That's a good thing. So you travel to the factory, and uh, it's like a day out, and you go with your salesperson from a local dealer. So 
There's local dealers throughout New England that represent the different manufacturers and depending on whether you go out to bid or how you buy the truck, there's numerous ways. In our case, the town pays cash. So that's very unique. Instead of going to the taxpayers and saying, hey, we need a Proposition 2.5 override or a debt exclusion override where in two years you're going to be like, whoa, when did that go up? Oh, that's the fire truck you bought two years ago. Or that's the fire station you built or whatever the case may be. Um, so you go to the factory and you sit down with the engineers and you, sp and you go over how you want the truck or the chassis, which holds all the, the pumps and everything else, in this case the ladder, and then you design the body and how, where you're going to put stuff and it takes about an entire day, all done on computer-aided design. And you come back, so let's say that's July of August, you come back and uh, somewhere around February they tell you the chassis is done and it's going to get the plumbing put into it or something else. And it takes roughly anywhere from 12 to 16 months to build a fire truck. Mm -hmm. A lot of people touch it. And that's what I thought this would be kind of cool to go through um, and just show you. So like for instance in our case when we got the money approved in November of 18 the truck wasn't built yet. It was starting production. So it was kind of at this stage. Mm -hmm. All right so they were just and this was out in Minnesota. Now I didn't get to go to Minnesota and that's okay, because it, it, it's November. <laughs> Summer ended sometime around August 3rd. So no, I, actually, it would have been an easier flight than Sioux Falls. But so here's, um, here's what a cab, this is the cab, and the cab gets put on the chassis. So you can see here, it's, it's not painted. The bottom is painted. They still have to do everything, and, and wiring and stuff like that. There's a lot. Going to tell, if I'm in your way, you better tell me to move, because I'm Irish. I take hints, OK? So, um, you can see it there. Like now we're getting a paint scheme, and that's what really was kind of unique for this is that because of the stage the truck was in, we we were able to get the paint color we wanted, which was this red over midnight gray, which is what our last truck was painted. So we didn't have a lot of say into what went inside the cab, meaning what kind of seats you want what kind of brackets to hold your self-contained breathing apparatus, what kind of switches, you know, how do you want that? I didn't have much say. It's like, here it is. It's like going to the dealer's lot and going, yeah, I like that color. That'll work. Does it have electric windows? Not in this one, but you'll save money. Kind of thing like that. So, um, but nonetheless, did I mention we saved $200,000? So, okay. Kirby's happy about that. All right. So, going on, now we get into more of now we're, we've gone from November. Here's, the, uh, here's New Year's Eve. This is the chassis. This is what they call the chassis. This is the cab. All right, so now um, the, another selling point for this particular product was you can see that the frame, these are called frame rails. Those are galvanized metal. You see those salt trucks go by every time the threat of snow is coming? They eat fire engines. Um, it's, it, they're eating your cars too. You just, you know, right. it's cheaper to buy a car than a. One. So we were, we were, when anything we buy now, we look for corrosion resistance, uh, stainless steel fuel tanks, stainless steel battery covers, galvanized frame rails if they're available. And for many years, you couldn't get galvanized because galvanized steel, very rigid, and these hold a lot of weight and they, they need to flex. And this particular company has developed galvanized. A lot of, a lot of fire truck manufacturers now are using stainless steel. It's, everything's about corrosion resistance. Um, but in this case, so here it is. They're finished here in Minnesota. They're sending down somebody else's uh, axle on, on our truck, and they're driving it to Fremont, Nebraska. And in Fremont, they're going to, um, so this truck has a 500 horsepower diesel motor. Um, that's in here now. There's no pump. There's no aerial. So it's going to go down to Fremont. And in Fremont, they're going to put the ladder on it, or what we call the aerial. So our last fire truck, it, I'm going too fast, slow me down. You can ask a question. I don't even care if it's about the fire truck, in case you hadn't noticed. <laughs> if, if you're wondering about Joyce's new recruits over there with the helmets on, that's all on her, though. I'm not going to speak <laughs> to those. Pinky and Brownie. Yeah, Pinky and Brownie. So our last truck was what they call a ladder. So it was a ladder in the back of the truck, and if you wanted to get to the end of the ladder, you had to climb up the ladder. What we bought here is what they call a tower ladder. It has a basket on the end of it. So you don't, so, and the reason for that was twofold. Was one, um, you can operate it with fewer people, as you can imagine. 
um, any economies of scale where you can be more efficient, you, you want to look for that um, because you need more people for a ladder truck. And, and the second thing was some of the buildings that have been constructed in town since 1988, in particular the hotel and the three apartment buildings at the Acton Line that are all four stories, fully handicap accessible, all four floors. So if you had a fire in them, even though they're sprinklered, and the, the misnomer is sprinklers put fires out, sprinklers allow people to get out of a building. They don't put the fire out, they give you time to get out of the building. And so when we started to look at, if we had an incident at Village Green and a fire in the third or fourth floor, and there's a handicapped person, you know, they're not going down the elevator. They gotta, you're going to have to take them off of there. So if you have a, a regular ladder truck, that person has to walk down the ladder. With the tower ladder, which we'll see here coming up, we can put them in the bucket and drop them right on the ground and go back up. And, and, and one person can do that. One firefighter can operate this, open that door, help you on, take you down or help three of you on, take you down to the ground. You can step off and we can bring you right back up and start doing that. So that was a reason. And they cost more money because there's more stuff. But, um, you know, you, yes? What's the time frame from the ladder being up to when it gets to the ground? It's, it's um, there's times, that's a hard one to quantify. It's, it would seem like 10 minutes if you're the one in the bucket trying to get down. Yeah. But in, in theory, you're limited. It's hydraulics. So there's no speed. But to, to put it, you know, obviously, the higher you have to go, the longer it's going to take to get up and retract. And then, but the, the bigger difference is with a regular ladder truck, you can't put that aerial on the ground without extending it all the way out. And you can't put somebody on it and then move it. Theoretically, you're not supposed to move the ladder while somebody's on it. In this particular case, with this type of truck, you can go wherever. I can, I can put it off the back of the truck. I can put it on this side or this side. And I can put it all the way to the ground. I can run it with a remote control. I can have somebody in the bucket. But time-wise, it'd be hard to sit there and say, yeah, it, it takes one point, you know, one minute and 30 seconds to go from the fourth floor to the ground. Because the other side to it is where it might be quicker to put you over here, there might be a car there. So now I have to spin it all the way around and go to this direction. So how's that for? I should be up in New Hampshire now, right? Yeah. Hey, how are you going to pay for that? We're going to pay for it. We're going to tax the rich. That's what we're going to do. Um, Kirby said no politics. So going back here, you can see even the, even the components. Remember I showed you the frame rails? Well, here's the components of the aerial itself, and they're all galvanized. So that truck comes with a... Um, uh, the lifespan is estimated 25 years. So this is, all this is warranted for 25 years as long as we own it. Okay, we'll find out. And in 25 years, won't be my problem. But that's all good to know. You know, I like to leave a good ship behind, you know, as a good captain of the vessel. I want to make sure the next skipper coming in. Okay. So, and then here's the turntable, um, which you can operate it from there. So I'm just giving you some, and there's, there's the aerial itself. So these are all, all manufactured in Nebraska. Here's the pistons that raise and lower it, you know, so, and, and here's the, again, here's the bucket, and this is a, they call a monitor, so if we had to flow water out of that on uh, the mill, if that's on somebody's house, forget it, you're not living there anymore, but, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> yeah, so, and here, here it is finished, so here it is, it finished in Nebraska around May, so it got there the first year, it took about five months. I won't tell you why, but because we're on camera. So, because um, I put the wrong one on. Uh, but they fixed that. So, a little bit more. Like, here's a, here's a good picture of looking down into. Um, and when we're done, if you want to see it, I can, we can pull it out and put it right on the ground. You can step right in there. It's got a joystick control, whereas all your old ladder trucks had three different individual levers. So, if you wanted to go up, you had to look down. Okay, this is up. Oh, I want to go to the right. Okay, right is that way. And then this third one would be to extend or retract the ladder. Now you sit there with these millennials. Sorry, Nicole. And, uh, you know, <laughs> um, and thanks for coming. And you can just, right with a joystick, you can go left, right, up, down. And it's really slick. And there's a, uh, an LCD screen here that will tell me how far I can go out based on how the truck is set up. And if I go to a point that's unsafe, it won't let me go any further. 
So whereas old trucks, you could just keep on going, and when bad things happen, they just got progressively worse. Tom, how many people will the bucket hold? The bucket will hold um, a thousand pounds without flowing water. So if you're flowing water, that changes the dynamics of how much weight. So you could uh, four people. Four or five. Yeah. Uh, five would be like the the, the the be like the phone booth. But that's your operator plus three passengers. Maybe. Yeah, it depends on what you're doing. You know, so most part, most time, you know, if a firefighter's in there in full gear, turnout gear and a bottle, they're 200 plus pounds. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it's just, and it also depends, how far am I going? If I'm not going very far, I could probably use more weight, but it's also, if I overload it, it's going to get a warning signal that says you got too much weight and Somebody short straw, that. usually the junior guy. Um, so here's a, here's a picture of the bottom. So we have some scene lights here. This is a, a, a shower nozzle, they call it. So if you are operating over a large building fire and it gets kind of hot, you can divert water here and set up a water screen and it protects you from burning your tootsies under there. So kind of thing. It also, also serves as the lowest drain point for when you flow water through it to drain the water out, particularly in the winter where we don't want the water to freeze in there because those are bad things. Um, any questions on that? I'm rolling right along, you know. And um, now we go out to South Dakota. So now it's gone to what they call finish. So on this other picture, you can see, well, kind of. There's no pump yet. There's no water tank. That's all going to get done out here in South Dakota. That's a really bad glare. How am I looking from here? It's OK. Um, so here's the, remember I was talking about you design the compartments and all that stuff. And that's, that's what you have here. This particular manufacturer makes one side and the other and then joins them together as opposed to one body and drop it on. So this is done. Here's the, here's the passenger side and then the driver's side can they come together. And this is a pump. So you can see um, here's, the, here's the tank. This plastic is black plastic. It's a 500 gallon water tank, which is for most ladder trucks that have a, a pump and a tank, they call them a quint is the trade name for that. Most of them have a 300 gallon tank. This has a 500 gallon tank. Not there with special, but that's what it came with. And that's a good thing. It, um, and this is the pump, uh, or the base of the pump without all the plumbing to all the discharges. But that's, that's kind of how that works. And for those that are really into engineering, um, that pump is called a midship pump. And how it works is um, you obviously have a transmission on the truck that drives the wheels. And when you pull up on scene and you want to use the pump, there's an, an engagement switch. And you take that switch and you take it from road to pump and it diverts a mechanism in the transmission and instead of driving the rear wheels, it's driving the pump. Mm -hmm. So when the pump engages, your speedometer goes up, but the truck doesn't move. Now, if the truck moves, you didn't put it in pump, <laughs> all right? So that's what I was, what roll, and you hope Kirby's not filming it. Because that's a bad thing. But that's, that's how a pump on a fire truck works. You have to divert the, you're basically diverting that drivetrain from driving the rear wheels to driving that pump. How cool is that? And you know what? I could be wrong, but you believe me. So <laughs> th we have that going for us, which is nice. And you know, you know, they hooked me in 20 minutes for the Rotary Club, just for the record. I think they wanted to leave. You people are stuck here, you know? Because I locked the doors after you came in. So here we're getting into, um, now we're in July, and this is what they call pre-paint. So I flew out to South Dakota in July. To this point, no one from the department has been out to see the truck. So now that it's at pre-paint, um, this is like your last chance to make any changes, any significant changes. Um, and you can see here, they've got the doors on the compartments. These, these here, this is where we hold spare air bottles. So you try to utilize as much space on the, on the apparatus as you can rather than just waste it. Um, you get a better picture of the pump. Uh, this is, and here is where we carry hose, hose that we might put in the, uh, to connect to a hydrant, let's say, rather than go in and fight a fire. This is more what we call supply hose. And then again, compartment space. Uh, the cab is painted, the body is not. This is all aluminum. And as you can see, many people have touched that, welding it, right, grinding the welds off, running wire throughout that whole truck. Hundreds of people will have touched or worked on this piece of apparatus by the time it's done. So that's why I say that, you know, to, 
Why does a fire truck cost so much money? Well, once you go out to a factory, and, and again, I didn't go to the first two plants. So this thing has gone from Minnesota and Nebraska without stickers on it. It's not like a camper where they put it on there. Hey, been here. You know, this, this truck climbed Mount Washington. Didn't see any of that. But so this was pre-paint. Um, again, what I did here, I'll show you before and after. Like, so here's an unfinished cabinet. And later on, you'll see what the finished product looks like. So I went out there for, you know, flew out one day. It wasn't that bad. Where did I fly? Chicago? I went to Midway. So I went uh, Providence. The salesman loves going out of Providence. Oh, my. Can I go out of Boston? I'm not, no. Uh, Providence to Midway to Sioux Falls. Sioux Falls is pretty cool, actually. Um, you know, it's like, do you know how many people are in South Dakota? It's not a trick question. Seven? Kirby, two? No. Um, 750,000. That's the state population. I was like, okay, I get it. So the little town, uh, Lyons, where this thing was built, they have a population, if I'm not mistaken, 77. Um, 430 people come to work there every day. No place to go to lunch, let me tell you. It's all right. They always gave us the menu in the morning, and it just showed up at noon. That's all you care about on these. Where am I going to eat? So after I disappeared, it went to paint prep. So you can see, like, the cab got painted up in Minnesota. Um, the, the aerial was painted down in Nebraska. And now they're getting ready, so they're going to put the primer over that aluminum. And um, it goes, you imagine the size of the paint booth to fit that thing in there. Um, and then, boop, now it's painted. So that was August 8th. And they also, remember I, I was showing you pictures of those cabinets? So now the cabinets, they didn't paint them. They use this material called Linex. And Linex is uh, uh, it's what's sprayed into pickup truck bed liners. Mm -hmm. So they hold up better. And um, that was a great idea because that sometimes the, every manufacturer uses different material. But in this case, Linex is becoming because it holds up to getting hit and everything else. So that's, that was the truck uh, painted. And then. Uh, what did I say that was? The 8th. And then on September 17th, the chief and I went out. So now it's finished, so to speak. Right? So now uh, it's all lettered. We had to change that. Because not only is it Littleton, but it was a little small. You know? Big truck, little letters. But you can see, like, all the graphics are done. All the emergency lighting's on it now. All the chrome. You know? So that's, um, so we were out there. So at this point, you take your specification and you go through every line item and then you test it you road test it you you uh test the pump you you test the aerial do i get to start over peaches you're gonna sit here no nah, just kidding just kidding i'm at the end all right no problem so again here's another here's another photo of it um this is where like in this particular case here's the this is where all the ground ladders go in that compartment. So every fire truck has to have um, an assortment of ground ladders. Not just because this thing has a big one, because some driveways this isn't going to fit down, trust me. And um, so you might, have to, you might have to use a ground ladder instead, which you can see in there. Um, here's those compartments that we saw before with just bare aluminum. And now uh, they have the Linex. This is, uh, this is something called um, pack track it comes with fasteners so you can mount tools to it and we'll see that out there and they have little rubber holds and you put your axes so and it also uh, swivels out so I can mount tools and put it in and put tools in front of it but open this door and, and it comes out and um, then what else did I have in it oh and here it is wow. that was a, a beautiful October day and the two guys on duty, hey, we want to take it all away. So that's 101 feet, straight up. And I didn't order the sky. And I'm not a photographer, but look at that. How's that, Kirby? Huh? You like that? Look at thumbs up. All right. Uh, I couldn't do that twice. Um, you're probably saying don't yell in the microphone either. But um, and what else? And then this was the last day Ladder 2 was here before the dealer took it back. So there's the old ladder truck, and there's the new one out in front of the station. You know. It's uh, well, I don't know. It's kind of like that, only different, you know. Did you trade them for the old one? I think so. <laughs> and he just took it, and I was pretty happy about that because uh, 
when the manufacturer tells you four years ago that they won't support the product anymore, we can't get parts, you go like, please don't break, please don't break till the new one comes. So it was a great truck. Uh, just a little history on a ladder too. Uh, Seagrave made 12 of those, 12, and 10 of them went to New York City. And if you want a, a, a fascinating, somber experience, the 9-11 Museum at Ground Zero is awesome. I went there last spring. And um, very similar to this is down there. They put it in there. I don't want to know how I got there. But yeah, one of the trucks that was destroyed at 9-11, it was very similar to this in New York. In the, so Ladder 2 was the last, uh, we believe, was the last operating version of that ladder in the country. So, because after 25 years, most fire apparatus, you're done. You know, obviously, it, there's a couple factors in there. One is, how busy are you as a department? And secondly, this truck was refurbished in 2003. So in 2003, it went back out to Seagrave, and they redid the ladder. They added this waterway. Prior to that, you took a hose up. And then you connected on the nozzle thing, and then there was two ropes and two people on the ground going, oh, to the left, hey, over here to the right. And uh, we got rid of that, so you could do it with a switch. But um, this truck did not, does, you know, look at all the compartments on ladder two. There's no pump there. There's no water on it. There's no tank. So we could store things. This truck had uh, air bottles in it, and we could refill our air packs on scene. So... A lot of, t there was a couple things that came into play. Now, you look at Tower 1, and I have a pump here, right? So there's my pump. There's a tank. The tank's in here. And every other fire truck that I helped buy, you were replacing a fire engine with a fire engine. So all the components I needed for, to run a pump, you have fittings and nozzles and stuff like that. You took them off the old truck and put them on the new truck. Eh, it, doesn't have, it doesn't have that. So every time, like, hey, can we get this? I'm like, ah, you can't spend that money because I need money. I got to buy fittings. I got to buy uh, all kinds of stuff because I wasn't replacing a pump with a pump. I was replacing an aerial with a quint. So there was, and the town, because the town paid cash, I got the money to buy stuff for the ladder because when the chassis was completed in Minnesota, we paid for it. They gave us a discount, right? Like the old days, here we go. I can go there. I can go back here with you guys. Yeah. Remember when you got oil delivered? If you paid within 10, you got 2%. <laughs> now no one would know how to figure that out, right? So you can't. So now you just don't pay them. And they say, don't, we'll forgive that debt. Don't worry about it. So um, I'm politicizing again. There I go. So the same thing, when the, when the aerial was completed, we, the town gave them a check, and we saved money. So all the money we saved. So the truck cost a million ten. That was what was appropriate, one million ten thousand dollars in change. And then the money we saved by prepaying the chassis and the aerial, I took that and I bought hose, I bought nozzles, I bought all the equipment I need for the truck. And that was that's how the same thing happened on the last two trucks. That's how we did that. We prepaid where we could to save money, right? So um, if, you, if we did a debt exclusion, that wouldn't have happened. You would have just paid it at the end. But that's, hey, lucky for us, right? So that's all good. Um, what else did I have on here? Oh, questions. So <clears throat> how often does it have to have maintenance, and where do you bring it? Maintenance? I would say uh, like once, once a year, it's going to get, regardless of, because uh, with fire trucks versus your personal vehicle, we do, everything's judged on miles. With fire engines, a lot of it's judged on engine hours because they idle a lot or they sit still. So at, at least once a year, you're going to change the oil um, and go through and change fuel filters and stuff like that. This one's going to be a little, most of my equipment is taken to a company in Boxboro and the he does that work for us. We don't have a mechanic in town to do that. The highway has a mechanic, but he does, me he does highway. Um, so like my ambulances, uh, where they get used daily, um, I try to every three to 4,000 miles oil change in them because uh, 
you know, you know your parents tell you stuff and some of it you don't remember, but other stuff sticks there and how gr grease is cheaper than a repair and oh my dad used to change the oil every 3,000 but the filter every six. <coughs> but you know, oil was different back then, you know. Uh, so this particular case, my, uh, we've had the truck since October. There's, uh, as you can imagine on something this complex, there's little things. So um, I'm trying to arrange to take it down to Connecticut. The deal is uh, just outside of New Haven um, and get some stuff done. However, it's winter and this has water on it. So I'm, I'm holding off on that. But that about once a year for routine maintenance, um, greasing of the truck can happen twice a year depending on usage because uh, the whole, the aerial device has grease fittings, uh, your outriggers, everything. There's probably, there's probably 70 plus grease fittings on that truck, give or take. I, don't, I haven't counted them yet, but I'm thinking that. Um, but again, it's, it's uh, uh, the fire engines, same thing. You have pump maintenance. So there's a lot of maintenance on a fire truck. It's just also, um, it's under warranty. So that's a good thing, you know. <laughs> so, uh, but like, the, it depends on the type of thing, just not to be a bit like, so for instance, one of my fire trucks just had a check engine light come on and something happened with the throttle pedal. This was a couple weeks ago. So they came up, they plug in a computer. The computer says, it's this. So they order the part, they put it in, it didn't fix the problem. And this was the dealer, right? And so they're like looking at it and they're troubleshooting it and they come back a second day. Well, it ended up having to go to, the, 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 we use an engine called Cummins. Cummins is a brand name of diesel <coughs> engine. There's a Cummins factory place in Dedham the truck had taken to Dedham and their software found something else. They fixed it, we picked it up, but that was, um, that's two and a half weeks I didn't have that fire truck. And that's, an, that's unusual. Most stuff, is, most, most stuff is like, hey, it's routine. We don't have to take it out of service, but we have to get it fixed. Am I answering that question or am I just doing the no, Irish dance? No. All no, right. How, how many times has it gone out? Well, uh, on runs, it depends on the type of call. I, don't, I would have to pull up data, I would say, the last two days, it hasn't gone anywhere. We've had, we had car accidents in Littleton, in the sun. Best time for car accidents when it's sunny out, because then you don't get wet. But um, you know, it it um, it depends on how we're staffed, and it depends on the type of call. So again, like when people are like, "We don't need this truck. We don't need this truck." I'm like, "Tell me why we need an Ohio-class submarine." You know, we got a bunch of them, never used them. So what do we need them for? It's a deterrent. It's the same thing here. If if you were stuck some place and you need to get rescued, you didn't care, you know, you probably don't care as long as the ladder truck does what it's supposed to do. It's a tough thing. It's a lot of money. A million dollars is a lot of money. I don't care what you're buying, you know, and it's a lot of money. Um, and, you know, we tried to do, at least I tried to do the best I could to find, you know, put equipment on it we can use and try to save money because I'm paying for it. You know, we all are, but it is, uh, that was, that's, that's a good question. It gets asked a lot, like how often. So today, for, so for instance, those of you who don't know, we, we staff four people a day. So there's four firefighter EMTs with at least one paramedic. We're paramedic level now, so we can stick you with needles, right? So we, we, went, we did that starting in July 18. We went to 24 hours a day. There's, um, and then during the day, it can be, we can run down to three people with the chief and I here. So the chief and I work an admin schedule Monday through Friday, and then the firefighters are here. Um, they start their shift at 7 in the morning, and they work till 7 in the morning the next day, and then the next group comes in. So today, uh, you know, there's four on duty. So with this case, if let's say there's a fire alarm activation at the movie theater, they're going to take the engine and the tower. The four of them will go. And then, depending on my mood, I might get on the fire truck. Or I might take my, my deputy's car. Depends on and also what I'm doing. But then we respond up that way. Now, if there's only three on, they're just going to take the engine, and we're going to call. We're going to page out the call department and hope people come back and take the tower. And or so then, if you have an actual incident, the only option these days you got to call mutual aid because mm -hmm. every town has the same thing, right? The, yeah. Go ahead. Do you just take it out sometimes? Drive it? Yeah, we definitely have to. It's such a different truck from this. Drive it. See here, no obscure. No, nothing obscures your view. Now you have this platform. It is night and day driving. It's weird not being able to see up. Yes. Especially if you get too close to the stoplight. 
<laughs> it's, it's Massachusetts. You really can't trust the guy next to you thinking it's green. It might still be red, and they're just going. But um, the, the actual, when you're, when you're driving the truck, there's a switch in the dash, and I can tilt this up, and I can see. Yeah. We don't tell anyone that? We don't want them to know. Yeah. Um, so it gives you the ability to see. So turning-wise, this truck is so much more maneuverable than this truck. 30 years of technology, but you also have much more in front of you. So like say for instance, I come down here to Roger Street, I'm gonna take a left on King Street. Well, in this thing, I could swing that way out, almost have the bumper over the sidewalk if I wanted to. Now I can't because I'll put that into a tree, right? So you have to, but, but from a standpoint of, I can pull out of here and not have to go in the other lane, which in Latter two, you used to have to get in the other lane, so like say, there's a church service on Sunday and they park over there. It was, it was a bear getting out of there. This truck, and, it, and it's, it's longer, it's way more heavier. It's 75,500 pounds that truck weighs. Don't tell me that when I'm going over a bridge I'm not supposed to. But, that, that, um, but because, because this can turn so much better than this, the, the, the angle of turn on the old truck was very narrow, this one, it's, it's so maneuverable. And so we do a lot of driver training with it now because it's new. One other thing I forgot to mention that's kind of kind of unique, and I don't have it on there, but because it's a demo, um, one of the things they put on this truck, and it's, a, it's specific to Rosenbaugh, but um, green technology, right? So I mentioned, here's a quiz. What size is the motor in this? How many horsepower? Ooh, you circle gets a square. <laughs> All right. So, you know, it's real fuel efficient. You know, it's like a Prius. You know, uh, so what, what Rosenbauer did, and I, I think about this because I didn't, I probably wouldn't have specified this in my, if I had built the truck, I probably wouldn't have done this. It's got what's called uh, Green Star Technology. So under here is a nine horsepower Kubota diesel motor. And how it works is if I park that truck, I set the parking brake, and I don't engage my aerial device, I don't put it into pump. If it sits at idle for five minutes, that diesel motor comes on. Five minutes later, uh, 30 seconds later, the 500 horsepower engine shuts off, and that small little diesel engine will run all my emergency lights, scene lights, and my air conditioning inside the cab. So if I'm sitting somewhere and you know the truck's on scene, but we're not really doing anything, like a lot of mutual aid fires you go to, they want you there, but they don't really want your truck. The thing can sit there and that thing will run it all day long. It won't run. I can't operate the aerial with that going. I can't operate my pump, but I can save fuel. So it's kind of, it, and, and it gets its fuel from the fuel tank on the truck. So on my other trucks, what we had, we got what's called a hydraulic generator. So we had these scene lights back. So <laughs> And everything changes, right? Everything, every time you think you're getting the latest and greatest, two years later you find out you didn't. So now everything is 12 volt. Everything used to be 120 volt. So wattages, so LED lights have changed how trucks are built. Now I have all these little 12 volt lights. I, don't, I, needed, I needed my hydraulic generator in the past to run those lights because you couldn't just flip a switch. It's too much voltage, too much wattage. So we would have a you'd have to engage a power takeoff in the generator. And what that generator would do, would, it would power my scene lights. And then we have uh, like a 200 foot cord reel. So we go to a house and let's say your carbon monoxide detector, or your, your furnace malfunctioned and your house has some carbon monoxide. We want to ventilate that house. So we're going to put a fan at the front door and blow fresh air in. Well, you don't have an outlet there. All right, grab the cord reel, pull it off the truck, start the generator up, and you can, that's our power source. Well. You can't move the truck with that running. This diesel, this diesel motor also runs a cord reel on that truck. It, really, all it does is it, it substitutes for the motor from idling. It runs my cord reel, and it runs two lights on the bucket that happen to be 120 volt. The rest of my truck is 12 volt, but that's, it's, it's kind of unique. In, uh, you're also seeing now some of the truck, fire truck manufacturers come up with lithium ion batteries for the same type of thing. So as... I believe within five to seven years, there'll be more hybrid fire engines. 
I think there's Rosenbach already has built one. It's out in California. Where else would it be, right? Um, so there, it's all battery. And as the battery technology for vehicles, and that might be a cool thing to talk about someday is electric vehicles, because there's, there's, you know, you, everybody knows about Tesla and everything else. Well, there's, there's hydrogen fuel cell cars coming, and, and electric cars, they're predicting now 100 and, what did I see that? 140 million by 2030? We'll all be driving them. Well, if we're still driving, you know. <laughs> Lately, I'm not sure I'm going to make it that long, but whatever, you know. You know, you know, it's just drive. You can talk and drive. It's 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 good. But you know, so gasoline, diesel, it all can't stay this cheap. Things are going to change, and then the, everything's going to come in, and batteries are going to be a big thing, and and um, so fire trucks are going to be the same way. You know, a lot of the stuff we're going through, we're running a big fire truck, and people are like, why do you take the big fire truck to somebody's medical? It's like, because you need help lifting. Sometimes we can't get in the house. So we take the truck. I don't like it, personally, because I, I, it's wear and tear on the truck, but in theory, you know, it's hard. I used to, when I started, there was only two of us working, and no one gets sick on the first floor. Yeah. They always get sick on the second floor, you know? <laughs> I know you're having trouble breathing. How are your legs working? You know? But um, so, you know, you, you, need the, you need the help. Oh, God. I can't believe he's recording this. Uh, but that's, that's um, you know, there's a lot of new technology coming out for motors. And, I mean, we have to do something, you know? So, uh, all right. What else did I forget? What happened with the mansion in Concord when they didn't have water? Kirby, shut the TV off. Uh, you know, that's, um, I hate that term, the perfect storm, but that's something with, uh, uh, like, for instance, if you have hydrants throughout town, like we do here, and Concord does, you're, you don't really get too worked up about, hey, what if we have a fire where there's no, no hydrants? You talk about it, you think about it, and um, I wasn't there. Our chief, we went to the fire, and you know, that's just, um, I'm sure it was talked about getting more water out there, and everybody said, I'm not paying that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, in theory, isn't that what it comes down to? You don't want it until it happens, and you're like, gee, I wish we had done that, you know? Uh, you know, I, w I wish I paid attention in accounting, but I didn't, so, you know, I'm not an accountant anymore. But you, you have... Uh, so when you have something like that, you have to rapidly assess and get a water supply going. But that house was so old, and the fire could, you know, the fire had a heck of a head start on them. They ended up finding out that the, one of the fireplaces had a hole in it, and they, they had had a fire in it the night before, and probably had numerous fires in that thing. And it just was, this was the day it just decided, to, and it went up and out and oop and then they couldn't get any water on it because not for anything there's a hydrant right here at the corner i could pull my truck up throw the hose there the next truck comes and hitches it up and i have water well when you don't have those you need a big tank so towns like boxborough and harvard they don't have hydrants i think harvard has them downtown now but that's so they know how to get a tank off. They got a tanker with 3,000 gallons of water on it, and they can dump it in the tank, and then you start pumping out of that, and then you send the tanker someplace to get filled up. So if you think logistically, they have to back in about a half a mile on that road, and that's what it came down to was the time it takes to set up that, especially if you're not proficient at it. It, it just was a timing thing. And then uh, in a newer house, you would have... There would have been more uh, code things that would have prevented that spread of fire in that old house. It probably just, I mean, 18, what they say, 79, it just, just took off. So what a shame, you know. And, and so they had, they had a very small water main that went to what they call a cistern. So a cistern could be a tank, could be like a well. And that was what they used because they couldn't shut the power off to the house because the power was running the well was running the pump in the cistern, so they couldn't even shut that off. So just it, you know, to, I was I was up in New Hampshire and watching it. I was binging it on Twitter, and uh, um, and I'm like, oh man, that just stinks. I'm glad I'm not there because I've you know, and it's I wouldn't sit there and lay blame at Concord. I don't think that's the case. I think it just it's just one of those what the the worst possible spot they could have had the fire. 
for an old house, no water supply, lousy access. I don't know if you know where that road is, but if you're traveling on Route 2 East and you go by Emerson, then the next, you kind of go over the river, and then there's a stoplight, and there's a little gas station there and a farm stand, and then right after that's a road you wouldn't, there's great hiking in there if you like hiking, um, and that's the road they had to go in. And then you get in there and it's all these little, everyone familiar with Green Needles? Yeah. Green Needles area? It's like that. Wide thoroughfares, plenty of places to park. No way, it's just it's tough, tough sledding. And that house, all the way in the back, right? So all the way in there. So just a, just a, a lousy deck of, hand, of cards they got for that, for that call. So that's I think. Come on, ask me something else. I don't eat lunch till noon. So. Well, I was curious. <laughs> you went to all these different places. Yep. How come they not in the pictures? <laughs> they didn't take pictures of you with these places at all. Don't look at my expense. Don't look at my expense report either. All right, because I, I never went. Right. Um. Who's gonna? I gotta take the picture. Look, I got the chief in a couple of them. Where's the chiefy? Oh, you were there, huh? He was there. Right. There's the chief. Oh, like we could tell. Right there. <laughs> so I was there taking his picture. Um. I missed that. I. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what pictures he took. Yeah. Why wasn't Kirby in the picture? You know, look at him. He thinks I know Braille is on the reading mobile. Um, but yeah, okay. No, I didn't get in any of them. You know, I'm, I'm in the man in the background. Yes, sir. Do you carry um, insurance? The town does. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Town. The town is. Uh, yeah. All the all the vehicles are insured by the town through um, through their. What's that? Then they probably have a blanket policy. Yes. Through you know through um, our health. There's an insurance provider called Maya. M I I A. Because I just, uh, in November, I had them come out and do a driver training class. So you can hide, they'll, they'll supply, a, a gentleman comes out and we did a day of, you, you do classroom and then they set up cones and you drive and it's, it's to help with your insurance rates. But yeah, the town insures all, all that. Yep. Yep. So, um, what else? I know I'm forgetting stuff. I'll remember later. Don't you hate that? CRS, can't remember stuff. And then you're like, oh, I wish I asked that. No. Um, restrictions for like going under bridges? Because that looks pretty tall. Yep. Um, I've told them all, if it says 12 feet, don't go under it. If it's over, over 12, in town we're good. But needless to say, um, here's my fingers crossed that the first fire, it actually gets used at in somebody else's town. Mm -hmm. Because then it's not one of our homes, and the paperwork's a lot less when you go somebody else's fire. They have to do it all. You don't. So, um, but, yeah, it's, it's roughly um, 12 feet, give or take. And some things that can affect it are, are these up or down? Is the thing tilted up? Did somebody tilt it up and use it? So uh, I think the highest point is 13 if it's tilted up. But the, the lowest bridge we have in town is on Foster Street, and that's 14-1. So, piece of cake. It just squares, scares the pigeons, you know. That's why if you live down there and we hit the uh, air horns, that's why. We always do that for yeah. the pigeons. Um, <laughs> but, you know, not, cause, not that the train horns. Then they, then they think people think it's the train, so you don't get in trouble either, right? So, yeah. See, you guys learn all the code now. Yeah, yeah. That's the fire department. No, that's actually the train. Uh, but, yeah, so the, it definitely um, uh, branches. I've, I've got a little notebook that I keep to send down to the highway to say, could you please go down this road and cut the branch? Because I don't think the truck's going to make it out, especially that snow on it. I, get, I know there's at least two roads that I don't think I could get it down there without snow. And it's hard because uh, I'm not talking driveways. That's a horse of a different color. I don't know what to do with some people's driveways. They, they literally, I don't think I get my ambulance in some people's driveway. And it, like, there's one on Foster Street that will remain nameless, not you, Joyce. And, um, it's a beautiful tree, and I was an arborist once upon a lifetime, and I hate, I'm like, oh my God, how would you prune that? It's a beautiful tree, but you can't get up the driveway. I'm like, the ambulance would, would hit the branch. And I'm thinking, never mind big, the big thing here, it's not going, you know what I mean? So that's a whole other thing. I, I have had to look, I set up driving routes for the guys that take, and say, don't go down this street, please don't go down there. If there's an emergency, yes, we'd go down there, but don't, because I don't want to scratch it. I don't. I I just love look good looking fire trucks. I can't scratch them. It drives me crazy. But yeah, it's definitely. And then there's driveways that it'll never it'll never get down. It's just the way it is, you know. Yeah. So and then not many fire trucks would get down. I mean, that's kind of cool having a long driveway. But it is. Uh, 
um, something to consider uh, for those people. And I don't, you know, I don't know as, as the fire prevention officer and the deputy fire chief, you know, I can't say to them, hey, trim those trees. You know, I guess you just kind of ask nicely, like, hey, you know, <laughs> just thinking about that. Just, but it's all good. So well, you guys asked a lot of questions. A little sketchy back there. You guys are kind of quiet. Not that you came on time, you know. <laughs> <laughs> How many surrounding towns have one like this? Are we, are we one of the So the closest one that has the tower is yeah. Chelmsford. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry, Westford does. Westford, does. Westford has oh. one, yes. So Westford and Chelmsford have a quint. So very rarely, like Lowell, Lowell has one of these with no pump. Because that's tradition unimpeded by progress. And they also staff differently. So, you know, they staff that truck. Whereas we're like, hey, pick the truck you want. You know, you're, you're on the ambulance, but if we have a fire call, you're taking the tower. So Lowell staffs that truck, and they have, it's a city. Yeah. They don't have to worry about having a pump and water on it because they have a pump coming from their five other stations. Yeah. So um, those would be the two closest. Uh -huh. it, also, um, it also impacts your homeowner's insurance. So if we didn't have a, a ladder truck, um, your homeowner's insurance would increase. Well, there's, a, there's an agency called uh, ISO, ISO, and they come out and they evaluate your water supply, your fire department, and your communications, meaning your dispatch. And from the information they gather, they give your town a classification rating, with one being the best and 10 being like, don't think your house is getting saved, okay? So um, you have to buy your own fire truck. And then, yeah. um, and from that, the insurance companies take that rating and they set your homeowner's rate for the town. We are a four. We'll never get to one. Uh, very few do. So in this state, Newton, Newton and Waltham are two in Cambridge. That I, I believe those are all ISO class one. That's five, five people on a ladder truck, four people on a fire engine. Uh, it's mostly in documentation, but again, cities, right? Big departments. So in training, so like your fire department is evaluated on your, on your equipment, your apparatus, how many pumpers, how many ladders, how much training. So this truck has a pump and it has a ladder. Common sense would say, count it as both. Not according to ISO, it's either or. So we look at that. So if they said it can count as both, then in theory, I could get rid of a fire truck. So we have three pumpers and a ladder with a pump. If I get rid of one of the pumpers, we'd become a five. And nobody knows why. And when you ask them, they, they, they give you the answer I gave you about maintenance, something like that. <laughs> Just like that little jig, <laughs> woo -hoo! Yeah, yeah, indeed, yeah. That's the best I can do. I think I just pulled a hamstring. So, um, but yeah, that's that's uh, there's like we're just we're going down Pandora's box right now. You know, ISO is like forget it. I don't even know how it works. I did a whole report on it. I still don't know how it works. What else? What's for lunch? <laughs> Nicole said she's she's buying. Nicole, she's so good. Taking it out of petty cash from COA. <laughs> Joyce knows where all the money is. We don't have petty cash. No petty cash? How about you? You got a question? Can't just sit over. I pick on the back row. Nothing? How'd I get so good looking? I don't know. Good genetics. My dog lived to 16. My grandmother was 102. Right. I don't know. Yeah. Did I mention my dog? Look at little Lola. She's back in there. Isn't she cute? Amazed. Little Puerto Rican amazed. street dog. How many places you have to go to get one thing done? Yeah. So, like, for instance, on, um, a yeah, little nugget. That's probably what she's doing right now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We, she's a rescue. Oh, yeah. That's one big sheep. Yeah, my sister uh, worked for Nat. My sister-in-law worked for NASA, so she did like 13 trips to uh, Antarctica. She got those in New Zealand. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Now I don't know how I'm going to clean it with the old the, my Puerto Rican princess taking a nap on it. I love her. She's so cute. 26 pounds. Just love. Uh, yeah, I got to hose it down. Um, where, who, where was I going? I don't know, but I like the paint color. Don't you like that? Yeah. 
You know what the best thing you can do when you're, when you're uh, putting an addition on your house? Hire a painter. <laughs> Kirby, shut that TV off for a second. And let him deal with the wife on picking colors. Don't ask a guy. Like, I got some down cellar. Looks pretty nice. We can use that. Um, oh, see, there's that CRS thing again. I had a thought, saw the dog, and lost it. Yeah, and no Dalmatian here either. Um, oh, the la so the other fire trucks, speaking of your question. We only went, they only, they, so that chassis for my three fire engines, that was made in Michigan at, at, at a manufacturer. They built the cab and chassis and drove it to Nebraska, and the fire truck was built there. Okay. This particular place, Rosenbauer, because Rosenbauer, Rosenbauer is a, a very, uh, like the largest fire equipment supplier in the world. They're huge in Europe. In the U.S., they're, they bought some companies. So that's why you're going here for this and there for that, because they purchased a company in about five or six years ago and made it Rosenbauer USA or somewhere in there. So they're a little more scattered where, you know, there's a company, uh, E1 Trucks are built in Ocala, Florida. Pierce uh, is another big family. They're built out in Wisconsin near Green Bay. Uh, Seagrave is out in Green Bay or in Wisconsin. Um, there's another one called KME. KMEs in Pennsylvania. So there's no one in New England makes fire trucks per se. They make, there's some small, let's go ahead. Up in Bradford, New Hampshire. Yeah, there's, there's it's a small, operation. small operations. So they'll make more of your brush type trucks, the small ones, you know, is yeah. it, but for the most part, uh, the chassis itself, not every manufacturer makes their own chassis. In this case, Rosenbauer does. So that's a, um, uh, Rosenbauer, that Rosenbauer chassis, they manufacture that. This, the other company we bought from is called Smeal, and um, Smeal buys a Spartan chassis, very similar to this because some guys left Spartan and went to work for Rosenbauer, and it's almost the same thing. So, because, uh, you know, what is it, something's the biggest form of flattery? What is it? Uh, Plagiarism is like the biggest form of flattery. Uh, so, um, but then, uh, that's really... When you get a, so like people, are, why don't you buy like a, an international or a, a freight liner? Um, they don't last, for one thing. They're commercial chassis. And, and um, they, they save you a lot of money, but um, it kind of depends on the truck. So when you start building a custom fire truck and you start adding all the equipment, all the weight, these just hold up better, and they're made for the fire service. But if all you can afford is a, is a commercial chassis, then that's what you get. You know, it all comes down to we were very fortunate um, the timing of when we needed to replace equipment, the, the money was there. And, you know, the station, um, staffing, everything else. It's the longest going honeymoon, I think, uh, anyone's ever seen. So, um, but, you know, it's, it, we're, we're just, I mean, to have this facility and all the equipment we have, I mean, we're really lucky. You know, and, and, um, you know, and you try to do the best you can to take care of it. Because, yeah. um, you know, you try to explain. Hey, so the first ambulance I bought in 2012 or 11 was $200,000. $200,000 for an ambulance, right? It's still out there. To replace it, $400,000. Yeah. They've now, there's more regulations on what you have to have. Yeah. Uh, back injuries have become a major uh, focal point of ambulance design. So now there's a like a lift system. So before, back when the day, you actually squeeze the string and extended up the legs, right? Except for Kirby, of course. Kirby was carrying peepers on litters down in Gettysburg when he was an EMT. Yeah. Sorry about that, Kirby. And um, so you would, and then when it stuck, so like. You got somebody in there, you know, the two of you lift it up and the legs are dropping, right? You're like, they're going like, squeeze it, I'm squeezing, right? And then we got power cots. So then we got these, puck a battery in there, electric over hydraulics, you hit a button and up they went, as long as the battery was charged. And now, but you still had, uh, where it happens is you put the cot up into the ambulance and then you're holding it all and you got to push them in. So, bink, right? So... Um, now they have a device, so if you have that cot in the back of the ambulance, it's on this device. The whole thing comes out, you put the legs down, and you just pull it off. So there's no lifting. Guess how much it costs? 
Yeah, forty thousand dollars. <laughs> Plus whatever the cot, the cot's another ten to fourteen thousand dollars. So right there, but but if you went ahead and said, How much did the last back injury cost? I'll just say disability. Big bucks, right? Yeah. So and then things like now they're trying to find a way. Most of us don't buckle up back there, right? How do you work on a patient if you're strapped in, right? You, everybody, it, it's all good till the ambulance does one of these, <laughs> and then everybody gets hurt. So they're trying to come up with ways to uh, protect the EMTs, but I'd still allow them to work, and it's not there yet. So, but it, it's amazing. Like when when we got the quotes in, like, uh, wow, crazy, you know. And I know, but you know, and and. and Every year, our emergency medical runs go up. Because we, we keep getting younger, yeah. you know? Yeah. Right? We're all getting younger. We don't need that. We don't need medicine. It's bad medicine, you know? You know, just wash your hands and uh, drink lots of coffee, you know? Because it's, it's organic, you know? It's organic. Anybody want to see the truck? Sure. Thank you so much for coming out. Nicole was, like, giving me palpitations with two people, and I thought one of them was Kirby. You know? <laughs> <laughs>